you are welcome to my channel without wasting your time i will go straight into the topic of the day which is how to make diagnosis of carbon monoxide poisoning in other words how can we know that this man or this woman has inhaled carbon monoxide and that is why he or she has come down with so 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 and so signs and symptoms because the gas is colorless it is odorless it is tasteless and non-irritating so difficult to know except in those who know for sure that there's smoke somewhere or because of smoke alarm in their house or because of carbon monoxide detector alarms in their homes they will not know okay without further ado let's go there's a separate full presentation on carbon monoxide poisoning already published by me clicking on this link will take you there then you will be able to understand the different names that this gas could be called the triple bond between the carbon and oxygen atoms involved the signs and symptoms how to make diagnosis like i'm doing right now the preventive measures the complications how we can treat everything is right here now on the diagnosis fully here first thing first we must know how high index of suspicion why that this gas is colorless it is odorless it is tasteless is non-irritating so it's difficult for anyone to know except when you are sure there is smoke somewhere or smoke alarm you no know, giving you an indication somewhere that there's a smoke somewhere or carbon monoxide detector that has you know, giving you the indication that it was in the environment where you've just left so outside that it's difficult to know there was a physician in a particular big hospital you no know, a number of people were presenting at the emergency room with similar non-specific sense of symptoms but the address was reading the same apartment building and the doctor took a guess this must be carbon monoxide poisoning then he sent no 911 to that building fire people went there and you no know, and so on like that so there will be variable non-specific you no know, signs and symptoms also you will know from the history that this is involving household members is involving a particular group of people neighbors in an apartment are involved right now or these people are from the same establishment maybe a particular store a particular warehouse all of them work in the same place and they are all presenting around the same time or the same day We'll need to take full history, thorough physical examination, and make use of eight wavelength pulse oscillometer that must be in progress quickly. That will help us to get to know hemoglobin oxygen saturation, methemoglobin, and carboxy hemoglobin. I can explain further as per eight wavelength how it is different from two wavelength that we commonly use. And you will get that right here if you click on this link. This will take you to the full presentation on carbon monoxide poisoning. Still on diagnosis, the values from 8 wavelength pulse oscillometer will help us greatly, but that is not the end of the road. With our index of suspicion, history taking, physical examination, 8 wavelength pulse oscillometer you know, values, then we we'll have plasma and carbon or the hemoglobin level estimated in the past that was the gold standard in fact many people will use only that to make you know of their mind on what to do in addition to that you can have arterial blood gases the reason why i jumped away from venous blood gases is that is useful only in stable patient but arterial blood gases will be helpful in both stable and unstable patients 
So we have to determine the level of carboxy hemoglobin and methemoglobin. The carboxy hemoglobin normal level in non-smokers is 3%. When it is greater than 3% in non-smokers, that is carbon monoxide poisoning. In the smokers, the values between 10 to 15% is still terrible to them. They could cope with that. Once it is greater than 15% in smokers, that is carbon monoxide poisoning. Then we call for toxicology screening. The value of carbon hemoglobin is just to know that this individual has been exposed to carbon monoxide. It is not the determinant of severity or toxicity. In fact, it might be negative. If the individual had you know, gotten out of that exposure for a long time, or you know, the protocol at the center where he or she has presented is such that once autocyte is taken and is at this level, just give oxygen. So if oxygen has been given, or it's been a while after the exposure and you, you've left the area of exposure, you've been exposed to atmospheric oxygen for a long time, you may not get the you know, value of carbon or the hemoglobin that will be threatening anymore. The treatment and progress or prognosis is based on signs and symptoms, not necessarily the value of carbon or the hemoglobin. Now, we can use venous blood gas to monitor carbon or hemoglobin level while the individual is already on the treatment. If it is fire incidence and you are contemplating on giving adosocobalamin to reverse the cyanide effects because in smoke inhalation, you are likely going to get both the cyanide and carbon monoxide at the same time, and they have synergistic effect. If you want to reverse the cyanide effect, then make sure the sample is already taken for your you know, uh, parameters before administering hydrozocopalamine. Hemoglobin bound oxygen will be drastically reduced in the face of carbosy hemoglobin presence. You can have immediate EKG and cardiac enzymes done. Why that? We want to know the effect of this carbon monoxide poisoning on the heart. In my full presentation, I've stated there that two organs will pay more price for carbon monoxide poisoning. All organs will be affected in the body for sure, but the heart and the brain will pay more or they will suffer more. So EKG and cardiac enzymes to find out what is happening to the heart. And of course, you can embark on CT, MRI or PET to know how much the brain or the central nervous system has been damaged. And when you do that, you are likely going to pick globus pallidus hemorrhagic infarction or deep white matter hemorrhagic infarction. You can have renal function tests done, creatinine kinase renalysis for protein to rule out rhabdomyolysis. Hepatic failure can be established or ruled out with liver function tests, and there might be mild leukocytosis, then you have complete block and down. You should estimate your glucose level, and the arterial blood gas will tell you whether there is metabolic acidosis from lactic acidosis or not, and of course, Back again to the cardiac enzyme, troponin, CKMB, to rule out myocardial infarction. Now, in pediatric age group, it's a bit different because other children will be able to tell you that they are feeling this way or not, and they will develop symptoms just like adults. The younger children, the story will be a bit different. They will not be able to tell you they are feeling this way or not. Then they, the younger children, will start some some symptoms earlier than adults in the same environment, okay? Like they are in the same house, it's the children there that will present in the hospital earlier than the adults, if the parents will take them to the hospital immediately anyways. So in younger children, they will develop fuzziness, feeding difficulty, and so on. Then in children, delayed neurological sequelae, 
is less of a problem compared to others. With that, I've come to the end of this short presentation on how to make diagnosis of carbon monoxide poisoning. First thing first, I in the of suspicion, everybody in that group from the same apartment, the same house, the same family, the same study group, the same uh, set of people working in the same establishment, in the store or warehouse, anywhere, something close to them, you not know, involved in exposure at the same time, presenting at the cleaning or hospital at the same time with similar signs and symptoms will give us a clue. This is likely carbon monoxide poisoning. Thanks for listening. Remember to share. Share this with everyone. Run away from anything that can expose you to carbon monoxide. The danger is really, really great. I appreciate listening. Share with everyone. Thank you.